My name is Brenda, and welcome to Horrifying History, where you'll hear about the unexplained, paranormal, and supernatural happenings that has stained the pages of history. Twins appear in mythologies from many cultures around the world. Some believe that they have a bond deeper than regular siblings do, and that they also can have special powers. Some cultures see twins as a symbol of fertility and a wish for immortality. But what if twins could be exactly that, immortal? Welcome to bonus episode 18, The Mystery of the Pollock Twins. In May of 1957, the small town of Hexham, England was in shock. 11-year-old Joanna Pollock and her younger sister Jacqueline, who were on their way to church with their friend Anthony, was struck by an erratic driver. In an instant, the two young girls died while Anthony, who was only nine years old, died on his way to the hospital. The community and the children's parents were devastated. This pain only worsened when it was later discovered that a local woman who was under the influence of multiple drugs had intentionally hit the children after she was forcibly separated from her own kids. She decided to commit suicide using her vehicle, and after taking what she believed to be lethal quantities of several drugs, she went for a drive. Witnesses saw her driving erratically and then bore down on those children as soon as she saw them. The kids couldn't escape since there was a wall on the other side of the sidewalk which blocked them from running. People said that these poor kids were tossed into the air like cricket balls on impact and both girls died instantly. The woman was admitted to a psychiatric facility while the incident made headlines around Britain. None of this helped the parents of the lost children and for Joanna and Jacqueline's parents John and Florence, they were completely devastated. Their little girls were gone forever. Or were they? It was said that Joanna, who was the third child but first daughter of the family, was kind of like a mother to the second daughter of the family, which was Joanna. In part, it was due to the children's parents were very busy at their grocery and milk delivery business and were mostly raised by their maternal grandmother. The little girls were inseparable in their lives. Joanna loved wearing costumes and acting in plays that she made up herself. She was generous, loving, and as some people say, maybe a bit psychic. Joanna had a premonition that she would never grow up, and she would often tell people that she would never be a lady. As John and Florence tried to move on, they dealt with their trauma and grief in different ways. Florence tried to avoid thinking of her girls, while John, he preferred to keep them forefront in his thoughts. On the day of the children's deaths, John said he experienced a vision of his little girls in heaven. Later, he sensed the presence of their spirits at the top room in their house and started spending time in this room just to be closer to them. He later told people that he felt the girls' deaths was punishment from God for having prayed for proof of reincarnation, but he also believed that his prayers would be answered by his little girls being reborn into his family. Florence, well, she didn't agree with her husband, and his beliefs started causing issues in their marriage. The following year, after praying for another child, Florence discovered she was pregnant. After finding out a baby was on the way, John started telling Florence that they were going to have twins, and these children would be their daughters coming back to them. But why? Well, John Pollock was born in Bristol, England in 1920, and he was raised in the Church of England before converting to the Catholic faith. Florence, she grew up as a member of the Salvation Army, and she converted to become a Catholic when she married John. Despite his Catholic faith, John strongly believed in reincarnation after he encountered the concept in a novel that he read at the age of nine. John later told interviewers that he would pray to God for evidence of reincarnation to prove himself right and to prove to priests that they were wrong. The Pollocks would eventually leave the Catholic Church, but at the time of the new birth, John was a believer of reincarnation, while his wife was not. Even though doctors said that the pregnancy was not a multiple birth and there was no history of twins in the family, the couple was overjoyed when on October 4, 1958, Florence gave birth to identical twin girls who they named Jillian and Jennifer. The thing was, they weren't exactly identical. 
At the age of three, Jacqueline fell and connected with a bucket, and this accident caused a small gash on her forehead over her right eye near the base of her nose. This created a permanent scar that was slightly depressed and was quite noticeable in cold weather. Jacqueline also had a roundish birthmark on the left side of her wrist. Now, Jennifer had a birthmark that looked just like Jacqueline's scar and a second birthmark in the same location as Jacqueline's birthmark. When the babies were three months old, the family moved to nearby Whitley Bay. The family continued with their lives until the girls hit two years old and began talking in earnest. They started asking for toys by name that belonged to their older sisters. The thing was, the girls had never seen those toys previously. By the time the girls were four years old, they could name each toy that belonged to their deceased sisters. Jillian claimed the toys that once belonged to Joanna, and Jennifer, she claimed the ones that belonged to Jacqueline. Both girls said that the toys were gifts to them from Santa Claus, which they were, not for them though. The family then moved back to Hexham around this time, and this is when the children started pointing out landmarks to their parents. The problem was, they were never there before. They were able to identify the school that they believed they previously went to. The thing was, the girls didn't attend that school. It was their deceased sister's school. They even started having reoccurring nightmares about getting run over and killed by a car. It soon became very obvious to John and Florence that Jennifer was Jacqueline and Jillian was really Joanna. Now, although this seems very strange, it was nothing compared to what was coming up. Florence started to notice that Jennifer and Jillian would play very odd and dark games. One of these involved the younger Jennifer lying on the floor with her head in Jillian's lap. Jennifer would explain that there was blood coming out of her eyes from the car that killed the both of them. John later recalled when he identified his dead children's bodies that Jacqueline's head was bandaged above her eyes. Soon after the girls started playing this game, they would panic whenever they would walk past a parked car with a running engine. They would start screaming in fear and saying that a car was coming to get them. As the girls aged, they continued to make very odd statements. Once, Jillian pointed to her sister's forehead birthmark and commented that Jennifer got the mark when she fell on a bucket. In another incident, Jennifer asked why John was wearing Mummy's coat and was annoyed that Jillian didn't recognize it. The coat was actually a smock that Florence used to wear while helping her husband with their milk delivery business. She had put it in storage just after her children's deaths and didn't use it afterwards. John asked Jennifer, how did she know that the smock was Florence's and the child replied that her mother wore it delivering milk? Interestingly, the deceased older child never saw this smock since her mother wore it while her daughter was at school and her younger daughter was with her at home. According to John, the twins would discuss the incident between themselves and would speak about it in the present tense like they were reliving it. They also displayed behaviors just like their deceased counterparts. The twins were very close, but Jillian would mother Jennifer just like their older siblings did. The girls were drawn to their grandmother as a maternal figure, just as Joanna and Jacqueline did, even though Florence was readily available to them. Jillian was very sociable, generous, and loved to dress up and act in plays just like Joanna did. She also acted older and more mature than her sister. Was it that her soul was actually older than her chronological earthly age? The story about the Pollock twins started to move throughout the community, and it eventually reached the ears of a paranormal psychologist named Dr. Ian Stevenson of the University of Virginia. Ian started studying the Pollock twins in 1964 and until 1985. He first heard about the girls from newspaper coverage in 1963. That same year, when the girls turned four years old, Ian met with the family in their home. He interviewed the parents at length and physically examined the girls and their birthmarks. He met with the family again in 1967 and he corresponded with them until next visiting them in 1978 when the twins turned 20. At one point, Ian decided to run some blood tests and what he found was very interesting. 
Apparently, the girls were identical and born from the same original egg. This means they should have been identical genetically, so why did Jennifer have birthmarks that her sister did not have? Ian also ruled out the possibility that Florence's maternal impression, which is a theoretical psychic influence of a mother over the unborn child, could have caused this. This was due to Florence did not believe in reincarnation, but John was the one that did. In a later work, Ian speculated about parental impressions as an alternative to reincarnation, but he believed that in this case, it was impossible that Florence and John could have molded their behaviors of their twins, that it would exactly match their deceased daughters completely. Based on the markings and the girl's memories, Ian became convinced that the twins were indeed the reincarnated Joanna and Jacqueline. He also believed that the twins had taken on the personalities of their older deceased sisters, with Jennifer being codependent on her sister in the exact same way that Jacqueline was dependent on Joanna. Ian wrote a detailed case report on the girls in the second volume of a book called Reincarnation and Biology, a contribution to the etiology of birthmarks and birth defects. He also wrote summarized versions of this case in two other works of his. By the time the girls turned five, their memories of their past life started to vanish. Ian went on to investigate over 2,500 cases over the next 40 years, and he published 12 books concerning reincarnation. But out of all those cases, Jillian and Jennifer remained special, and he continued to be in touch until his death. Both of the girls went on to live normal lives who accepted their parents' belief that they were their older sisters reincarnated, while both showed mild skepticism about reincarnation in general. Then in 1981, Jillian started experiencing visions of herself playing in a sand pit with her brothers. She could perfectly describe the house, gardens, and the orchards that matched a house that the family lived in while they were in Wickham. Joanna lived at this house at the age of four, but Jillian had never been to that location or lived in that house. So, were these girls the reincarnation of their dead sisters? Many say the case is very weak, since the only witnesses to the statements that the children made or the behavior they displayed was their own parents, and one of these was a strong believer in reincarnation. It is also thought that the twins could have gotten the knowledge about their older sisters from many other ways, like photo albums, family stories, and maybe even newspaper articles. Some believe that John could have talked to his twins about their sisters, or that the girls could have overheard people talking about them and their deaths. Another thought was that John and Florence were reading too much into the girls' statements, or maybe they were just lying. But none of this explains the fact that the girls were tested, and were genetically identical, but they had different birthmarks that matched the dead girls. Ian himself found that in the 895 cases of reincarnation that he studied, 35% involved birthmarks or birth defects that matched the deceased marks or injuries. Were the Pollock twins reincarnated versions of their dead siblings? Nobody's going to know for sure, but according to Ian, this case provides some of the strongest existing evidence that reincarnation may actually be real. Thank you all for joining me for our latest episode of Horrifying History. Do you believe in reincarnation? Do you guys think that the Pollock twins are the reincarnated versions of their dead sisters? Join us on Facebook at Horrifying History, on Instagram at Horrifying underscore History, and on Twitter at Horrifying H-I-S-T-1, and let us know what you think about this. I also have been asked by you guys, what is the best way that you can support this show? Well, the best way is by hitting that subscribe button for my podcast and giving us a five-star review with your podcast provider. With each subscribe button hit and by giving us a five-star review, you let more people know about our show. Now the added bonus is when you hit that subscribe button, you are automatically downloading our next episode on its day of release. It's a great way not to miss our next episode. Lizzie Borden, Axe Murderer or Victim of Circumstance. Feel free to reach out to me anytime at horrifyinghistory at outlook.com with any comments, questions, or story ideas. I love hearing from you guys. 
And if you want to bring a piece of horrifying history home with you, check out the great items in our store. You'll find it by going to www.redbubble.com and typing horrifying history in their search tool. Thank you all for listening again today. And until next time.